is a video presentation of determination of free and total glycerin in biodiesel by gas chromatography, Analytical Services Method 38. Glycerin is a major byproduct of biodiesel production, a process called transesterification, where oils and fats are converted to fatty acid methyl or ethyl esters. Glycerin may be present in free form and bonded as mono, di, and triglycerides. Their amounts are an indication of the conversion reaction and biodiesel quality. Determination of free and bonded glycerin by gas chromatography is perhaps the most important test for biodiesel quality. High total glycerin content contributes to formation of deposits at injection nozzles, pistons, and valves. The determination of free and total glycerin method described here is based on this official method. The range of detection for free glycerin is from 0.005 to 0.05 mass percent, and the total glycerin is from 0.05 to 0.5 mass percent. This procedure is not applicable to vegetable oil methyl esters obtained from lauric oil such as coconut oil and palm kernel oil. Before attempting this technique, it is mandatory to read the test method in its entirety. It is also imperative that anyone attempting this test method possesses a detailed and extensive knowledge of gas chromatography operations, integrations, and calibration curves. This presentation is simply an overview or a summary of determination of free and total glycerin. The good laboratory practices associated with safety and personal protective equipment represented in this video are simply the safety requirements of the FAPC analytical services. We urge you to determine what specific good laboratory practices and particular safety requirements are necessary for your own method application. Some of the recommended guidelines include, follow safety precautions at all times. Consult the material safety data sheet for detailed information on the chemical substances related to the method. Wear the appropriate personal protective equipment for handling chemicals and instrumentation. Record data at the time of observation. The equipment required for the determination of free and total glycerin include gas chromatograph or GC. The FAPC Analytical Services uses an Agilent 6890 equipped with flame ionization detector, auto injector, GC column, varying ultimetal for biodiesel glycerides, an open tubular column with a 5% phenyl polydimethyl siloxane bonded and cross-linked phase internal coating with an upper temperature limit of 400 degrees Celsius. The column should be 15 meters long with an inner diameter of 0.32 millimeters and a film thickness of 0.1 microns. A pre-column of 5 meters long with an inner diameter of 0.53 millimeters. Septum, high temperature, low bleed. Glass liner, Agilent part number 5062-3587 and an electronic data acquisition system such as ChemStation by Agilent. The chromatographic conditions are given in Table 1. The reagents required include standard kit containing all four reference compounds in the concentrations specified by ASTM D6584 and the internal standards. Sepelco number 44918U comes complete with these standard solutions derivatization reagent, MSTFA, normal heptane, high purity helium, high purity hydrogen, and zero grade air. The materials required include microliter syringes, 10 milliliter serological pipette, analytical balance accurate to 0 0.1 milligrams, transfer pipettes, 10 to 15 milliliter glass screw cap vials with polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE, lined caps, 5 or 10 milliliter glass lure lock syringes, syringe filters for organics, 
30 millimeter in diameter and 0.45 micron pore size. Glass screw cap GC vials with PTFE lined caps. Vortexer, timer, and chem wipes. Personal protective equipment includes gloves, safety eyewear, and a lab coat or apron. To prepare the standards, label five 15 milliliter vials, standards one through five. Accurately transfer one milliliter of each of the five standard solutions into the corresponding vials. In other words, use a micro syringe to transfer standard one to the vial labeled standard one, standard two to the vial labeled standard two, etc. Add 100 microliters of internal standard number one to every vial. Add 100 microliters of internal standard number two to every vial. And add 100 microliters of derivatization reagent, MSTFA, to every standard vial. Securely cap each vial in vortex or shake vigorously. Allow the vials to stand at room temperature for 20 minutes. After all five vials have stood for 20 minutes, add 8 milliliters of normal heptane to each vial. Securely cap and vortex or shake vigorously. Syringe filter each standard into labeled GC vials, about 1.5 milliliters into each GC vial. The total volume of each standard solution is approximately 9.3 milliliters, so several GC vials will be required to filter the entire prepared standard. Use a new filter for each standard. Store vials in the refrigerator until analysis. Store the remaining internal standards in a sealed vial in the refrigerator for further use. Refer to the manufacturer's package insert for expiration dates. To analyze the standards by gas chromatography, load a GC test method that contains all of the test parameters listed in Table 1. Ideally, there should be two separate instrument methods, one for standards and one for samples. The instrument settings will be identical, but the integration events will vary after injections have occurred and chromatographic parameters are fine-tuned. After loading the GC method that has been established for the analysis of standards, build a sequence table to include at least one solvent injection, such as normal heptane, as a blank. This blank run provides the chromatographic baseline. In the sequence table after the blank, add the first set of injections for the five standards. Specify the injection volume of one microliter. Each of the five standard solutions will be injected three times and an average of the three injections will be used for the calibration curve calculations. Sample results will be calculated from the areas and amounts of these calibration curves. When the sequence table is complete, allow the instrument to reach the ready status and begin the analysis. When all the runs in the sequence table have been completed, review the chromatograms and peak integration report. The gas chromatography software, ChemStation, will calculate the average of each component for each individual standard solution. In the calibration table, enter the average peak areas for all five levels for each individual component, including the peak areas for the internal standards. Check the calibration table to ensure that the correct internal standard is assigned to each component. Use the internal standard with the closest retention time to the component peak. Internal standard assignments and relative retention times are outlined in Table 2. The ChemStation GC software will use the peak areas entered and the internal standard designations to automatically calculate peak area ratios. The ChemStation GC software will also prepare a calibration curve for each reference component by plotting the area response ratios as the y-axis versus the amount ratios as the x-axis. Additionally, once all of the data is entered for the calibration curve, the software will calculate the correlation coefficient, r squared, for each component curve. The correlation coefficient should be 0.99 or greater. 
This calibration table will be used as is for the analysis of standards only. However, while the area and amount ratios from this table will also be used to calculate sample results, the component names will differ in the calibration table for samples. To prepare the samples, weight to the nearest 0.1 mg, approximately 100 mg of sample, directly into a 10 to 15 milliliter vial. Using microliter syringes, add exactly 100 microliters of each internal standard and the derivatization reagent MSTFA. Vortex or vigorously shake the vials and allow to stand at room temperature for 20 minutes. Add 8 milliliters of normal heptane to each vial and vortex or shake vigorously. To analyze the samples, use the GC method that has been established for the analysis of samples. Remember, the peak names and the integration events are different for samples and standards, so this step is critical. Build a sequence table to include at least one solvent injection, such as normal heptane, as a blank. This blank run provides the chromatographic baseline. When the sequence table is complete, allow the instrument to reach the ready status and begin the analysis. View a chromatogram for each injection. There are various options for viewing and printing chromatograms within the ChemStation software. Use the sample chromatograms to identify the glyceride groups by comparing the retention times to the standards. The mono, di, and triglycerides are separated according to carbon numbers. For identification of individual peaks, use the relative retention times given in Table 2 and the reference chromatograms in ASTM D6584. Relative retention time is calculated by dividing the retention time of the individual component by the retention time of the corresponding internal standard. Glycerin is the first analyte peak with a retention time relative to internal standard number 1 of approximately 0.76. Glycerin is the only component assigned to internal standard number 1. Monoglycerides are primarily separated according to carbon number. The three groups of peaks with retention times relative to internal standard number 2 are Group 1, monopalmitin with an estimated relative retention time of 0.76 and a carbon number of 21. Group 2, monolian, monolinolian, and monolomolinin, often a single or overlapping peak with an estimated relative retention time of 0.83 to 0.85 and carbon numbers of 21. And group 3, monosterin with an estimated relative retention time of 0.86 and a carbon number of 21. A pair of peaks, methyl esters with a carbon number of 24, may appear with an estimated relative retention time of 0.80 to 0.82 and should not be included in the calculation of monoglycerides. Diglycerides are also primarily separated according to carbon number. Peaks with an estimated relative retention time of 1.05 to 1.09, carbon numbers 34, 36, and 38, should be included in the calculation of diglycerides. In the event of peaks overlapping or poor peak resolution, the grouping of 3 to 4 peaks with relative retention times of 1.05 to 1.09 shall be attributed to diglycerides. Triglycerides are separated by carbon number as well. Peaks with relative retention times of 1.16 to 1.31, carbon numbers 52, 54, 56, and 58, should be included in the triglycerides calculation. After identifying the peaks, measure the areas of the peaks identified as glycerin, mono, di, and triglycerides to calculate the mass percent of each. If using ChemStation GC software, carefully enter all variables in a manner that will allow the program to automatically perform the calculations. As an alternative, the calculations may be performed manually using the slope and y-intercept of the calibration functions. A summary of the manual calculations includes Calculation of the free glycerin Calculation of the mono, di, and triglycerides 
conversion of the mono di and triglycerides to bound glycerides using the corresponding constant for each glyceride. Calculation of total glycerin by adding the free glycerin and the bound glycerides. The calculation for free glycerin as mass percentage is performed using equation 1. The mono di and triglycerides as mass percentage are calculated individually using equation 2. Finally, the total glycerin is calculated with equation 3 using specific mathematical constants from the ASTM method for the various individual glycerides. Samples should be prepared in duplicate and analyzed in duplicate or triplicate. Report results to the nearest 0.001 mass percent. For data acquisition, troubleshooting, and maintenance guidelines, refer to Analytical Services Method 38.